The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 30 of your distance learning program for geology opposite science with Kenneth Yosimbong. Our lesson 30 is titled Occurrence and Uses of Fossils. In our lesson overview, we shall look at the correction of assignment. We shall also look at the outcomes, the previous knowledge, the problem situation, and we shall look at the lesson with respect to the activities, as well as we will look at the summary and exercises, and we shall end our lesson with an assignment. During our last lesson, we had some work to do at home. It required that we should name and briefly describe three methods of how hard parts of organisms are preserved, but altered. The second part of that assignment required that we should state and briefly explain five ways in which fossils have been preserved as traces of animal activities, or better still, as fecals. In the first part of the assignment, which required that we should name and briefly describe three methods of how hard parts of organisms are preserved, but altered. Remember, hard parts preserve, but altered, meaning they have been what? Some work that is done, some parts are removed, then we are left only with hard parts. So the very first method that can preserve fossils through uh, to preserve fossils with hard parts alter is carbonization. In carbonization, we have it that an organism is slowly decayed after it has been buried and gradually loses its volatile constituent, that is the soft parts, and also gradually increase, increase in its carbon content. By vola volatile components here, we mean components like oxygen, nitrogen, and other elements. Then they give way for carbon to increase. Note should be taken here that the carbon increment here is not as compared to the coal system during the formation of coal. Here it is a little bit different because it is a process of fossilization, not a process of petrol formation or uh, uh, energy formation as in coal. The second is petrification, which is simply under understand as being turned to a stone. So the fossils, hard parts, are being transformed to be as strong as a stone. Remember that in geology, stone is always used in the fossilization process. But when it is a rock, we refer to it as a rock, not a stone. Then we have the mineralization process. The mineralization process involves the original hard parts of the organism being dissolved and removed by underground water. Remember that underground water is water that, uh, that circulates within sediment. And the circulation here is through infiltration and percolation. So in the course of doing that, the materials is removed from the hard shells, and then there is a simultaneous 
deposition or replacement of the material that has been removed by other uh, substances, therefore causing the hard parts to be easily fossilized. The second part of our assignment requires that we should state and briefly explain five ways in which fossils have been preserved as traces of animal activities. Here note should be taken that we will have only impressions, that is, uh, fossil or organic traces. And here, the, uh, the, 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 the direction of the question was geared towards animal activities. So the first, we have tracts and borrowers or borrows, which are records of movements left by animals on sediment and later on preserved. Here, the simple understanding is thus, that organisms first live in that area. Then, after some time, they are dead, or better still, they stop living in the environment. Then, you can have uh, the, 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 the left, the remains being preserved. And this way, you can have tracks showing that organisms have been passing that way, and you can equally have burrows, like burrows of worms and other insects that has to live in maybe holes within the ground. We have coprolites. By coprolites here we mean it is ancient physics, which are what? Fossilized. Because the organism should have left in that area, had to defecate or send out some waste then, after some time, the waste was preserved, and we can now see it as uh, coprolites, which are interpreted as fossils. Then we have gastrolites. Gastrolites are simply uh, well-rounded and polished stone. We commonly have it in, uh, in fowls. They use it to grind their food in order to facilitate uh, uh, the process of digestion. But in this case, should we consider them fossils, they are most likely related to reptiles and dinosaurs, which is, uh, which is simply a way of facilitating their digestion process. The reason for which they are preserved as well-rounded material, because in the course of the digestion process, they are polished. Now we have bones in pit and tar which have to do with antiseptic properties that help to preserve uh, fossils without necessarily allowing them to get decayed. So they simply come in, they tie the material and help it to prevent any form of decomposition or destruction before there is preservation. Then we have molds and casts. These are impressions. We have internal and external molds, and they are simply in impressions that are left in the rock after the organism would have died, the soft parts removed, leaving only hard parts, which later on are removed, leaving impression. Then the replica of what is seen in the rocks is then referred to as cast. That is where we end our assignment. The right approach to that assignment had to reflect this uh, 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 particular uh, ways of preservation that we have been able to see. In our today's lesson, which has to focus on occurrence and uses of fossils, we will be looking at first how to describe the occurrence of fossils in rocks. So at the end of our lesson, we will be able to describe the occurrence of fossils, especially in rocks. And then we will be able to state and to describe the uses of fossils. Previously, we have learned on modes of fossilization. In other words, different ways in which fossils are preserved or different methods in which fossils are preserved. So after having looked at the different uh, modes of fossilization, now, they will help us to be able to understand how fossils occur and how they can be used. In our problem situation, we shall take a look at these rock sequences. 
This is group one and group two. And you realize that all of them are layered, with each layer having, having specific fossils. Now, this was a picture that a geologist had in mind before going for field work. A petroleum engineer visits Bakasi Peninsula in southwest Cameroon. He collected samples and realized that he could use them to determine when past geologic events occurred. He also discovered that he could use the samples for short and long distance correlation. Now, which concept can be or can the petroleum engineer use to explore the geology of this area? That is the geology of Bakasi Peninsula in Cameroon. That is in the southwest region of Cameroon. Yeah, in our possible responses, yeah, it is possible that the petroleum engineer considers the fossil record found buried in most sedimentary rocks in the area. Yeah, that is a possibility. Yeah, secondly, that he could consider the state of balance of the materials in the formation. Yes, that is another possibility. And then thirdly, Yes, that he could consider the economic benefit of the materials if extracted. Now, as we go through our lesson, we will be looking at which of these possibilities is suitable for the petroleum engineer to be able to explore the geology of this area to give the sense to how the material occurs and also how the material can be used. Remember that in uses of fossils, you can be able to use them to correlate the geology of the past, as well as discover the geology of the past, as well as give specific dates to rocks, as well as relative dates. So we will go through our lesson and we will see which of these responses is very comfortable. Now you shall also take a look at this rock photo. You will observe it and deduce what you see. Now in your observation, take note of these impressions. Look at the way the impressions appear on the rock. And remember that the focus of our lesson today is on occurrence and uses of rock. So this photo guides us to our lesson on occurrence and uses of fossils. Occurrence of fossils is part A of our program. Now, fossils occur in particular rock types based on the mood and the environment of formation of that rock. Remember that during conditions necessary for fossilization, we did specify that not all the rocks will have fossils. We also said they will be very common in sedimentary rocks. Better still, not all sedimentary rocks will have fossils. So we will discover it in the course of this lesson. Now, fossils in sedimentary rocks, as well as fossils in igneous and metamorphic rocks, will give us the impression of what we have just seen in the photograph above. Now, we will look at, we will begin with looking at fossils in sedimentary rocks. Now, we realize that fossils occur in sedimentary rocks, yes. But specifically in rocks like limestone, we have mudstone, we have uh, siltstone, we have sandstone, we have shells that accumulate in former seas. And then we equally have some environments where fossils will occur, like lakes and along rivers. Now, fossils are abundant or they occur as many as possible in rocks laid down relatively in shallow seas. Now, in shallow seas here, we shouldn't mistaken it for littoral environments because we already said that littoral environments are very harsh environments where wave action is too high. So here, our interest is neritic environments. We also call them footic environments where sunlight penetrates and gives possibilities for oxygenation, which permits organisms to live here. Fossils are rare, 
or even absent in rocks of continental origins because they provide very minimal chances for organisms to uh, be fossilized here. Given that, you know, the land environments are too exposed to scavengers and they can help destroy the fossils or the organisms before they are being fossilized. Now, secondly, we will look at uh, some sedimentary rocks like Traventine, Cartofa, and the Silicious Sinta. These are all carbonated rocks or chemically formed rocks. So fossils rarely occur in other rock types like Traventine, Cartofa, and the Silicious Sinta deposited for that is like in uh, mineral springs. Why? Because, you know, in these areas, they are too basic. And it's possible that if the organisms are uh, acidic in composition, they will have to be destroyed. Then, being, or they will open chances for decomposition and it will destroy the organisms. So they will not easily be preserved in these rocks. We have the third set of rocks. That is limestones, and, uh, and these limestones are highly fossilized. One thing that we should take note here is the fact that there is, there is entire, you know, molds and casts found in limestones because they only provide very good uh, possibilities since shells of many organisms will be calcareous. So they will, uh, they will match with the composition of uh, calcium carbonate that uh, 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 cement in limestones or that make up the highest composition of limestones. They are dominated by shells of corals and crinoids forming coral and the crinoidal limestones. So this is one of the ways that we use to classify limestone based on their fossil content. Then we have clays and shells. Clays and shells are also highly fossilized. This is because they are very fine and therefore they will provide very possible chances for preservation of organisms. Fossils in fine grain rocks like uh, delicate shells are crushed by complications and at times destroyed by tectonic forces. But the fact that the material is fine firstly will preserve the organisms before this complicated condition. So clays and shells are fossilized. Then we have nodules. Clays and shells have nodules with limestone, with uh, iron stone, and well, phosphate. These nodules, mostly we call them uh, olites, and they will simply form a nucleus. So when it is the shell of an organism, it will fasten the degree to which fossilization is taking place. So nodules are formed around organic remains and are easily preserved. The feet, we have quad uh, sandstones and conglomerates. Now, first thing, quad sandstones and conglomerates are coarse grained. So already they will not be highly fossilized. So their fossilization nature is too uh, 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 sparse. You hardly will, ha will have fossils there. But that does not mean that they cannot have fossils. Then fossils may be crushed because of the coarse nature of the rocks. And the permeability of sandstones may cause a lot of what? Circulation. So that you end up having only molds or impressions. Then the second part of the ways in which fossils occur is with respect to uh, the consideration of igneous and metamorphic rocks. We already said that igneous and metamorphic rocks are formed under very harsh conditions of temperatures and pressures. So, easily put, they are rarely fossilized. And uh, the only condition that we may have here is when you have wood being carbonized, that is, during an, ero an erotic uh, process, you can have uh, a tree being burned by the heat of the intrusion. That way it is preserved. We have uh, carbonized tree trunks and we have uh, common areas even here in Cameroon that you will have 
that process happening. We have some caves where we have petrified wood in Jagiri, as well as in the west region of Cameroon. This is an example of a photo of a tree trunk that has been carbonized by an eruptive uh, 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 process. The second part of our lesson has to do with uses of fossils. Fossils are commonly used in five different ways. We have fossils as indicators of ancient climate, that is paleoclimate. Fossils as indicators of sedimentary environments as well as evidences of sea level changes, that is sea rise and fall. Then we have fossils as stratigraphic indicators, and then we have fossils are equally so useful to geologists and scientists, as well as the use of fossils as life and death assemblages. Today we are going to handle the first part which is fossils as uh, indicators of ancient climate. The first part is the shape of fossil leaves. Leaves with smooth uh, margins are characteristic of warm climate. So if you see leaves that have smooth margins, you simply know that they indicate warm climate. Why leaves with tough or jagged margins are indicative of cold climates. Then you have compound leaves will indicate tropical uh, plants. So that is how we can be able to point a finger to the geology of the past using fossils. Then we have thick coal seams. Thick coal seams will, that is, especially the ones that are made up of plant remains, will indicate a wet climate. Why fossil uh, spore and fossil pollen will quickly point a finger to uh, plants that had lived in the past. Then corals will indicate tropical climate. So a coral in the tropical climate will quickly be found preserved, especially at latitude 30 degrees of the equator. That indicates a tropical climate. And then we have the feet. This is plant uh, fossils with ari roots. This will indicate directly, yearly will indicate true yearly rings, and they will guide us to understand tropical climate as well. Then we have three rings in fossilized wood. We are just from seeing occurrence of fossils. So we are saying that wet summers will produce wide rings of trees, while dry winter will produce narrow rings of trees. And then marine mullocks. These are organisms that will carefully guide us through their spines to understand that the environments are warm seas or they are deep seas environments. Then we have planktonic organisms. Planktonic organisms like foraminifera, we have global, uh, global rotalia, and then we have these organisms will be coiled and they will indicate warmer waters as well as the ones that have that are left coiled we take it again the the, the foraminifera and globorotalia that are coiled to the right will indicate warmer waters why those that are coiled to the left will indicate colder waters then based on composition of the skeletons this will help us to be able to understand if the environment was warmer or cold. So when you see shells in warmer waters, it is an indication of what? Higher magnesium content. Then oxygen isotope uh, ratios in shells also help us to be able to point a finger to the past environment or to the past climate. Oxygen 16 falls as precipitation and gets locked up in glaciers. So shells that are enriched in oxygen 18 will indicate times of glaciation. So the two of them must relate oxygen 16 and oxygen uh, 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 18. Then we have annual group rings, in, especially in corals. These group rings will point a finger to temperate, uh, temperate uh, crime, uh, climate. 
And where we don't have root rings, they will indicate tropical climate. Then we have polar fossils. Large plants and animals live in Sahara. Desert indicates climate change. While uh, 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 insects and mammals will quickly point a finger to narrow temperature ranges. So that is how we can use fossils to trace the past climate. Now, during our lesson, we evoke a problem situation about this petroleum engineer who visited the southwest uh, region of Cameroon in the Bakasi Peninsula. And we were requiring to know which of the concepts the petroleum engineer will best use to explore the geology of this area so that he can assist him in telling the past history, uh, uh, the past geological history or correlating rocks, or better still, dating rocks. We shall now look at which of the responses is best for our lesson that can help us to understand how fossils occur and how they are used. The first case was that he should consider the fossil record found buried in most sedimentary rocks. Our lesson has been talking about the different sedimentary rocks in which fossils occur, especially the final green ones. So this first proposal of fossil record found buried in most sedimentary rocks is acceptable because they are only these fine sedimentary rocks that can be able to preserve fossils. So through them, we can understand how they occur and know how to use them to indicate past, uh, past climate. The second one, the state of balance of the material in the formation is not acceptable. Why? Because he's only talking about a state of balance, which is the concept of isostasy which has to do with vertical and horizontal movements of the crust. So it cannot help the petroleum engineer. Then the third one, the economic benefits of the materials if extracted. This is a commercial purpose. And it will not be able to help a geologist to either correlate or date rocks. So this response is not also accepted. Summarily, fossils occur in particular rock types based on mode and environment of formation. Fossils occur in sedimentary rocks like limestone, mudstone, sealstone, sandstones, shells that accumulate in former seas, lakes, and rivers. Fossils are used as indicators of ancient climate, indicators of sedimentary environments, and evidence of sea level change. Now we will go into some exercises and see if we are prepared our material and correctly. Now, fossils occur in a particular rock type based on A. Mood and environment of formation of rocks. B. Abundance of the organisms. C. Size and preservable hard parts. D. Rock type and rapid barrier. The correct answer is A. Fossils are abundant in rocks let down in shallow seas where water is oxygenated due to A. Organisms present. B. Much light. C. Much wave action. D. Death of many organisms. Our correct answer is B. That is much light. Then, fossil spore and pollen grains indicate A, the type of animals, B, the type of organic remains, C, the types of plants, and D, the types of traces. Our correct answer is D. C, fossil pollen will indicate the type of plants. Based on composition of skeletons, shells in warmer waters have higher A, magnesium contents, B, calcium contents, C, sodium contents, D, potassium contents. They will contain magnesium content, that is A. Now, our assignment to do at home, we will be able to, we will try to go through our lesson and see if we can answer these questions. Question number one, briefly describe the occurrence of fossils in sedimentary rocks. Number two, state five uses 
of fossils as indicators of ancient climate. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on occurrence and uses of fossils. And we will focus on the other uses of fossils. See you in our next class. Una tege si matege yop, una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, ngani bana matege mot, ngani la kiri watege ndong, esotina biadinkido, mane tambia niña.